This video tutorial will solve the AP Chemistry free response question number one from 2013. Let's briefly read the question. A student prepares 100 mils of a saturated magnesium fluoride solution by adding half a gram of the solid to 100 mils of distilled water and stirring until no more solid dissolves. So we're creating a saturated solution which is analyzed and the fluoride concentration is 2.4 times 10 to the negative three moles per liter. First sub question, write the chemical equation for the dissolving of solid magnesium fluoride in water. You can see I've done that here already. Notice I wrote a, uh, an equilibrium arrow. Uh, a forward yields single arrow is just fine for this question, but it does say that uh, a saturated solution, no more solid dissolves, uh, is created. So that would indicate a, uh, an equilibrium symbol. Again, not necessarily, you won't lose points if you use a, a single forward arrow. What is important in this question is that you know the um, the mole ratio of magnesium 2 plus to fluoride 2 minus is 2 to 1. So that's an important, important point. Um, second part, calculate the number of moles of magnesium fluoride that dissolve. So we know some information to start with. Uh, first of all, we know the fluoride ion concentration is 2.4 times 10 to the negative 3 moles per liter. And we know that uh, we have 100 mils or 0.1 liters of that. Now here's the important part. We need to convert to mole. We know moles of fluoride ion. We need to convert to moles dissolved of magnesium fluoride. And notice that is a 2 to 1 mole ratio. So you must include that information. So one mole of magnesium fluoride for every two moles of the fluoride ion. And when you do that math, you end up with 1.2 times 10 to the negative fourth uh, moles of magnesium fluoride dissolved. Now, third sub question is determine the value of the uh, KSP, the solubility product constant. And this question is essentially asking, can you write the KSP for magnesium fluoride? Uh, and that would be equal to the concentration of the magnesium ion, sorry, 2 plus, let's make that a little neater, magnesium 2 plus times the concentration of fluoride ion squared. And we know the values for both of these things. Now, first of all, we were given the value of the fluoride uh, in, the, uh, in the solution. That's shown up here, 2.4 times 10 to the negative 3. And notice from the stoichiometry, of the problem. I'm going to make a little bit of a mess here, but notice that it's two fluorides for every one magnesium. In other words, the concentration of the magnesium in the aqueous phase is half that of the fluoride concentration. And we know the fluoride concentration right here. So we can substitute some values in. We can say magnesium then is half fluoride, which would be 1.2 times 10 to the negative 3 times the fluoride ion concentration, which is 2.4 times 10 to the negative 3 squared. And when that is calculated, you end up with a value of 6.9 times 10 to the negative 9th. KSP is always unitless. So that's the final answer for that third sub question. Part B of this question, uh, let's read it together. A beaker contains 500 mils of a solution of both calcium and barium ions at a concentration of 0.1 moles per liter. A student wants to separate those ions, calcium from barium, by adding 0.2 molar sodium fluoride dropwise. And then you're given the KSP, uh, the solubility product constant for both calcium fluoride, which is 10 to the negative 11, and barium fluoride, which is 10 to the negative 6. The first subpart of the question asks, which salt will precipitate first, calcium fluoride or barium fluoride? And here's the important part, justify your answer. They are looking for that. The graders for the AP are looking for the justification. Well, the answer is uh, calcium fluoride will precipitate first. And the reason is the KSP is is five orders of magnitude lower than the KSP for barium fluoride, indicating that it's a much lower solubility uh, for that salt. So the, K, the justification is this. Simply, the KSP is smaller, and therefore the reaction quotient, which is uh, uh, the value of the concentrations at any time during a reaction, will exceed the KSP first as you add fluoride. Remember, KSP is calcium 2 plus 
times the fluoride ions minus squared. And uh, as you add fluoride, that F minus number, the fluoride ion concentration will increase and the KSP will be exceeded first because it's so much lower than the barium fluoride KSP. So calcium fluoride will precipitate out first. Subpart B2, calculate the minimum, minimum concentration of fluoride ions necessary to initiate precipitation of the salt selected in part uh, B1, and that's calcium fluoride. Um, the, what they're really asking here is at what point will the concentrations of these ions in solution exceed the KSP? And we were given a little bit of information to help solve this problem. Specifically, the, the concentration of the calcium ion in the solution we're adding is, or, I'm sorry, into which we are adding sodium fluoride is already 0.1 moles per liter. So we have a couple of pieces of information. We know the KSP. The KSP was equal to, uh, bear with me, 3.5 times 10 to the negative 11 for calcium fluoride. And uh, let me write that down here. 3.5 times 10 to the negative 11 to the KSP is equal to, again, we know the calcium ion concentration that was given to us. It was 0 0.1 molar. And then we have some value for F minus squared. So we now have to solve for that value for the fluoride ion. And that's relatively straightforward. Uh, uh, solve for F minus. So 3.5 times 10 to the negative uh, 10 is equal to the concentration of fluoride ion squared. So essentially, you want to take the square root of 3.5 times 10 to the negative 10 is equal to the fluoride ion concentration and you end up with a value of 1.9 times 10 to the negative 5. Oops, 10 to the negative 5 for that. Subpart B3, calculate the minimum volume of, and I should state the minimum volume, let's emphasize volume, of 0.2 molar sodium fluoride that must be added to the beaker to initiate precipitation of the calcium fluoride. Now, there's an important note in this question. It says this, assume, right up here, the addition of the sodium fluoride does not significantly affect the total volume of the liquid in the beaker. And we were told the total volume is 500 mils. So no matter how much we add of the sodium fluoride, we're assuming that the volume does not change. 500 mils is the initial and the final volume. So this essentially is a, um, is a uh, dilution problem. Um, where we can say, all right, how much uh, 0 0.2 molar sodium fluoride do we need to add to a 500 mil flask to get the concentration down to 1.9 times 10 to the negative fifth molar? That number is from the previous part. That's the concentration needed to start precipitating the calcium fluoride salt, the, cal the concentration of the fluoride ion. So we can solve this using the uh, dilution formula, M1V1 equals M2 V2. Uh, and we know the initial molarity was 0 0.2 molar sodium fluoride. We just don't know the volume of that. But we know the final molarity that was solved for in the previous question, 1.9 times 10 to the negative fifth. So 1.9 times 10 to the negative fifth moles per liter. And we know the final volume is 500 mils. Okay. And then we can very easily solve for V1. V1 in this case is equal to 4.8 times 10 to the negative uh, 2 milliliters or 4.8 times 10 to the negative 5 liters. Subpart C of this question is um, a little bit, uh, requires some thinking. Um, there are some obvious answers and some not so obvious, and there's one wrong answer that may come to mind. Um, it says this, there are several ways to dissolve salts that have limited solubility. Describe one procedure to re-dissolve the precipitate formed in part B. Uh, in this case, that would be calcium fluoride. Sorry, calcium fluoride is the precipitate. So that would look like this. So ignore this part up here. Let's get rid of that. In any event, um, the first and most obvious solution would be to heat the solution. If we heat it up, the solubility of most salts uh, increases. So if we heat the solution, 
it should redissolve the calcium fluoride. The second possibility would be to add water. Simply adding water would, um, would change it from a saturated solution to an unsaturated solution. So if we added water, we'd redissolve it. There is a third possibility. You could acidify the solution. Uh, so if you added H plus ion and acidify it, what will occur is that the H plus will team up with some of the uh, F minus and form hydrogen fluoride, which is uh, hydrofluoric acid, a weak acid. And so some of those uh, fluoride ions will be taken up by the hydrogen ion, and therefore you've decreased the concentration of this in solution, and the, uh, the, the equilibrium will shift to the right, dissolving some of the calcium fluoride solid. There is one wrong answer that is often written for this problem, and that is to stir. Stirring alone will not increase the solubility of a saturated solution. You have to do something else besides stirring. Um, so that would be considered wrong. In any event, uh, that is the answer to um, 2013 free response problem number one. Did you like it?